What's the sign that you've grown cold toward God? That you used to be close to God, maybe you used to be empowered by God, but something happened and now you're just going through the motions. What's that sign? The sign is legalism. In chapter 14, we find Saul under a tree next to the high priest whose name is Ahijah. He's the nephew of Ichabod, God tells us, and Ichabod means glory is departed from Israel. But Jonathan's been up all night dreaming about Shamgar and all the amazing things that God did through him and through Samson and other judges and says, what could God do through two people totally committed to him? So he finds a strategic spot. He says, we could fight here. And he says to his armor bearer, what do you say? We just take the, on the garrison of the Philistines. And he says, I'm with you. He puts a sign out there and he says, if they say, you know, if we say, you know, hey, we're over here. If they say, come get us, then we're supposed to fight. If they say, wait for us and we'll come get you, then we're supposed to run. Well, they said, come get us. And so the fight was on. And Jonathan and his armor bearer begin killing the Philistines like never before. And God sends an earthquake, and they start killing each other. And Saul, under the tree, says, hey, what's that noise? And the watchman is watching the armies of the Philistines and notices that they're melting away. They're dying. And so he says, hey, um, I want you to take roll call. What? I want to find out who's not here. I want to know who started that battle over there. Instead of just joining the battle. And then... He says, I, I want you to get the Ark of the Covenant. Saul, why do we need the Ark of the Covenant? We want to pray and see if it's God's will we go and fight. Sometimes it's just God's will you go and fight. And pretty soon the battle is so loud, he finally says, let's just, let's just go. And, and, and they decide they're going to fight. See, he, he wanted to know who was going to get credit for this. He didn't want his son getting credit for this. So finally the battle's on. People are coming out of the rocks and the caves who've been hiding for months in Israel, and they join the battle. And there's this amazing rout of the Philistines. And in the middle of all this, Saul makes a, a vow. Whew, really spiritual, right? Anyone who eats anything before I avenge myself of my enemies is cursed, and I'm going to kill. Why? I mean, is this really about you? No. Well, Jonathan doesn't get that information, and so they're chasing the Philistines into the forest and God provides honey a pretty important thing right when you're in the middle of battle you need some energy quick energy and he's eating it it's, it's just laying in there on the ground it's like God just provided well he didn't hear about his dad's stupid vow and finally they tell him and he says this is dumb the armies we could fight better if we had energy well it comes to Saul's attention that Jonathan has eaten in fact, this stupid vow caused the Philistines to, when they finally were allowed to eat, grab animals and eat their blood. They, they sinned against God because they didn't take the provision God gave them. Instead of admitting, I made a stupid vow. I really haven't been very close to God. I should have started this battle. Instead of any of that, he says, we're going to kill my son who had the amazing audacity to take on a garrison of the Philistines, who caused this battle, and who allowed God's power to come down. I mean, he says, we're going to kill Jonathan. The people didn't allow it. Jonathan, his life was spared. But this is the kind of man Saul became. When he disobeyed God, did not repent from disobeying God, it goes worse and worse and worse. And it gets worse as Second or First Samuel continues. What's that mean to us? It means as soon as we find ourselves in the wrong, we got to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. It makes a world of difference. If you don't do that, what you do is you find yourself becoming a legalist. Very harsh on other people who are doing the right thing. And very soft on yourself. You become... A giant hypocrite. Where is the Ark of the Covenant? Let, let's pray. Instead of doing what you're supposed to do, fight the battle. If you find yourself today harsh, overbearing, legalistic, you got to ask yourself, what's really in here? Maybe do some business with God about that today.